Hi, I'm Tracy Ackerman, the designer and creator behind Keely Boo. I make patterns for 14 to 20 inch dolls, as well as videos showing you how to enhance your patterns and make cool accessories to go with your outfits. If you haven't already subscribed, consider doing so and hit the notification bell so you'll always know when I've posted new content. Today, we're going to be making these adorable little leaf bags so your fairies and woodland elves have somewhere to put their treasures. Let's get creating. Let's take a look at the supplies you're going to need for this project. The first thing that you need to do is print out the pattern, either for the 18 to 20 inch size dolls or the 14 to 16 inch size dolls. The links to these files will be in the description. We're going to be making our leaf bags out of felt. I've just got regular craft polyester felt here. I think I got it from Michaels. It's the 9 by 13 size sheets, which is enough to make one bag. You can choose to use wool felt if you'd like. The polyester is a little less expensive, so I went with that. You're going to need some thread. I like to have a thread that matches my felt color as well as a contrasting one to stitch the vein design onto the bag, but that's up to you. You can certainly stitch it on with a matching thread as well. You're going to need a button. Um, I'd recommend a wooden button or a natural colored one just to keep with the theme of the bag. I've got a toggle button here and a coconut shell button. If you want to make your button functional then that's all you'll need but if you're just going to sew your button onto the top then you're also going to need a sew-in snap that'll work as the closure for your bag and some hand sewing needles to sew that on when you're done. For your strap, you have a bunch of different options. Here I've got a strip of leather that I've cut that's about a quarter inch wide. This is just some regular cotton cording um, meant for a clothesline, which I've uh, tea stained to make it not so bright white. You could use yarn, you could use um, fake leather cording, whatever you think is going to look good with your bag. Lastly, as an option, if you have some alcohol markers, I'm going to show you how to use these to accent the veining in your bag. It can really kick your design up a notch, but that's optional. If you don't want to do that step, then feel free to skip it. I've got my pattern pieces cut out and I'm ready to start on construction. So the first step is to trace your pieces onto your felt. As you can see, you can probably get a couple bags out of one of these sheets. I like to trace around the pattern pieces on the felt rather than cut around them with a rotary cutter because these pieces have some curves in them and I find even with my little tiny rotary cutter blade uh, it's tricky to get around all the corners and curves without cutting into the pattern piece and sort of warping. So I've just traced around my piece with um, this dark blue ballpoint pen. i do the same thing here. Now there's some notches that I need to mark on this piece front here and that tells us where we have to clip. So for now I'm just going to mark them on the outline. And when I go back and cut these pieces out, then I'll snip into there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out, and then I'm going to give you a little tip on something that'll make your life a lot easier when dealing with these pieces. I've got my pieces cut out, and as you can see, I have notched them here on the sides where the pattern piece had those red markings. This is going to become our uh, starting and stopping stitching point, so there'll be a little uh, hole left here in the seam, which is where we're going to put our straps through later. Now, if you see, if I lay these on top of each other, they match. If I turn this upside down, it doesn't match so well. So what I like to do is mark the inside of my bag pieces so that I know which is the inside and which is the outside for when I'm doing the next step because um, 
I have gotten confused before. I've beautifully stitched my leaf bag and worked with the alcohol markers and added some depth and color and oh, it's so beautiful. And then when I went to put my bag together, it didn't line up because I had done the stitching on one side of the, the leaf piece and on the wrong side of the front piece. So just give it a little mark with some chalk or a pin or whatever method you like to use that's a removable method of marking. And we're going to take these over to the sewing machine and I'm going to show you how to add that leaf veining effect. I'm ready to start sewing my veining and I just like to do this freestyle but if you feel more comfortable you can draw a design onto your leaf bag first. So I'm looking at my little X here so this is going to be the inside of my bag so I'm going to stitch on the outside. I typically will just do one line of stitching here, back stitching at the beginning and I just kind of freehand curve the first line along the whole length of this back piece of the leaf bag. This is going to become the back and the front flap. As you can see I've used a contrasting thread here but as I said you could use one that matches with your leaf bag if you'd prefer. Now that I have this line sewn the next step is to put some veins coming in this way. I'm just going to freehand it again. I'm using a universal needle and a stitch length of three millimeters because I find that um, the stitches do tend to bunch up a little bit on the felt so a longer stitch length works great. Again I'm just starting always back stitching when I start my seam. When I get to the first line that I stitched I'm just going to leave my needle down and pivot back stitch at the end clip on my threads as I go I think I'm going to add mm, at least two of these little veins coming off the main one maybe three we'll see how it goes Again, I'm going to pivot because I reached that center line. Back stitch. So you just continue to sew these veins. I'm going to think I'm going to do one more on what will be the flap here. So now that I've finished this flat portion, I'm going to switch and I'm going to start doing the veins going like this now because this will be the back of the bag when it's all sewn together. So that is the back, that will be the front flap and now I need to move on to the front piece of the bag. So this is the inside. I'm just going to double check by putting these together and making sure yep, they line up. So I know that I want to stitch on this side because this is going to be the outside. I'm going to follow the exact same procedure as I did for the other piece that we just stitched.
Okay, so I've got this done. Um, now I'm going to show you the next step, which is optional, and that is using the alcohol markers to further define these veins. Got my stitched pieces here, and just double checking, these are the insides. So I'm going to be decorating on these sides. So I like to take my markers and just darken a little bit along the vein lines. Um, so here I'm using a brown. It's a Copic brand marker, but any alcohol marker will work. Sharpies, Prismacolor, I think Michael sells a brand called Artist Loft. And this is really up to your in artistic interpretation, but I like to darken along these veins with my brown marker since I did the stitching in brown. If I had um, done a different color of bag, say an autumn type one, I might use some more reds and oranges and things in it, but this is what I'm going with today. So I've just darkened up along the veins there. And then I think I'm also gonna go in and do a little bit of shading with my green Prisma color here. And just like with my stitching, I don't generally have a plan for how I'm gonna do this. I just kind of go for it. Um, if you're nervous, because you haven't done this before and you're not sure what it's going to look like. You can always test on a scrap piece of felt and see if you like the effect before you add it to your bag. Okay, so you can see the difference there between this and this with the, uh, the green. I'm just going to go ahead and add some here as well. So once you've done that, you can go back and take a look at it and see if there's any spots you missed, any places you want to fill in. I think I see a couple spots on here that I want to just darken up a little. Maybe go along the veins a little bit more here. There we go. Again, as I've said before, sometimes I have trouble stopping when, it, when I'm embellishing. So I'm going to go back and have a look at this, and I think I'm pretty happy with that. So our next step is going to be to sew this together. So I'm uh, going to pin this right sides together, and then I'm going to stitch it up using some thread that matches this green felt. I've got my pieces pinned together and what we're going to be doing is starting from the area where this jots out here and sewing down to the first notch, back stitching at the beginning and at the notch. Then we're not going to stitch in the area in between the notches and we'll pick up again and start stitching again at this second notch and that's going to leave a space for us to thread our strap through. So I'm just using a universal needle again and I've got matching thread in my thread and bobbin this time so it matches the felt. I'm starting with the back stitch there. And then I find it a little bit tough to see the notch in the felt, so I'm just double checking to make sure that I know when I've gotten there and I'm doing a couple back stitches. Okay, and then I'm gonna put my needle down again at that second notch, do a couple back stitches and then just continue sewing around the perimeter until I get up to 
the notch on the other side. So a uh, quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'm coming up to the notch on the other side here. So I'm just gonna take a couple stitches. I think I need a couple more. Back stitch again. notch right there and then I'm just gonna put my needle down again at the second notch back stitching and finish off so you can see that I've left an area here free of stitching in between the notches on each side and that's where we're going to be threading our strap through. So I'm going to go ahead and clip these threads and trim the seam allowance down a little bit and then we'll turn our leaf bags right side out and get ready to put our closures on. I just wanted to show you here I've trimmed down my seam allowance to about an eighth of an inch and then I'm just going to turn my bag right side out and finger press it. So um, this is how it's going to sit when I've uh, folded the flap over. On this one I think I'm going to use this toggle button and I want to make it a working buttonhole. So I'm going to need to cut a slit in the felt right here and I'm going to carefully do that with my little micro tip scissors. I can get them in. Okay. So I've I've clipped a little hole. Just want to make sure that button is going to fit through. And then I'm going to mark where I'm going to need to place my button. So I'm just going to stick my chalk through that button hole, make a little mark. And I can see it's right there. Um, now, if you decide that you don't want to make a, a real buttonhole, you're going to have to uh, sew your button on the flap and put a sew-in snap to be able to close the flap there. Okay, I've got my needle threaded, so I'm just going to come in from the wrong side and sew this button on. Now, um, I'm not too worried about the felt buttonhole splitting or tearing because I am not going to be playing around with this very much and opening and closing it a bunch of times. But if you are making this uh, for sale or for a child who might be opening and closing it multiple times, you might want to just apply a little bit of fray block um, to the inside on the uh, outer edges of the hole that you slit just to keep it from stretching. Oh, am I unthreading my needle here? Just to keep it from stretching or tearing further. And once I've got that sewed on a number of times, I'm just going to knot it off in the back. Three or four times should be plenty. Oops. Okay, and then we're going to move on to putting the strap on. So for this one I'm going to be using a leather strap, 
but as I said, you've got a number of different options you can use. So what we're going to do, for the 18 to 20 inch dolls, you probably want a strap that's anywhere between 18 to 20 inches long. And for the smaller dolls, you can do something that's more like 15 to 16 inches long. If you want to put a long tail on the ends of these, because we're going to knot them to keep them from coming through the little um, opening here, then you'll need to make your strap a little longer. So you may just want to kind of measure it on your doll and see how it looks to determine how long you want that strap to be. This one is about um, 18 inches. Okay, so I've just brought the strap through these little side holes we left in the stitching and I've knotted it and that is it. We've got a little leaf bag. There you go. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make those leaf bags today. If you haven't already, download the pattern. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and I'd like to hear from you guys. Are there any fairy or elf accessories that I haven't covered yet that you'd like to see me do? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.